All right. Good afternoon. Thanks for coming. Um, we are going ahead with the next talk. Uh, my name is Jorge Salamero. I work for Sysdeck. And this is about what the fuck my container just as my shell. So a little bit about myself first. Let's see if this makes less noise. Yeah, much better. So I've been working in open source for some time already on Monitrain um, for a few years. And just made a year working at Cestake. I work on the marketing team, but I consider myself a gamer. So I'm one of those persons lucky to play with different technologies. And today we are going to talk about containers, security, and Mesos. So how many of you know Sestay? Can you raise hands? So I know a little bit. So all right, like we're more than half of the audience. Good. So you, for those uh, that you know and you don't know Sestay, for both of you, if you remember, a few years ago we created this open source project. Uh, last year we were over one million of downloads. I don't know, to be honest, right now. Um, it's an open source product uh, for container troubleshooting. So it's great for looking at what, what's happening inside your containers. It was a great success and people they were asking us to do more. So we created a commercial product for doing monitoring, both on SaaS-Prem, uh, integrates with DCOS and MESOS and gives you all you need to basically monitor your clusters. And from that experience, we saw that that level of visibility that we can gain what's happening on what's happening inside the containers, we could also do some security stuff. And we started experimenting it with it, and we ended up with something we call Cesdic Falco. It's also all open source. It's been used for uh, by a few folks out there with big names. And it basically provides you, you with Sysdex security, no worries, I'll give you them afterwards. That went very well, and we said, uh, okay, let's do something else more. And that's why we came with Sysdex Secure, um, a commercial product to do runtime container security and forensics. I'll show you a bit later on. Um, or if you have more questions, you can come around the booth. But um, when, when trying to implement security on containers, obviously there are multiple layers, things that you're going to implement. But I want to focus today on scanning. Uh, so what are the containers doing? We can look at, it, at this from two perspectives. Something that is called static scanning and something that we call dynamic or runtime. So static scanning basically means analyzing your image uh, without running it. So why do you need this? Well, probably <coughs> you, even if you are not aware of, your developers are using containers. And w because they don't look at it from a security mindset, you might end up having them run Docker files like those. Oh, so I'm going to download this thing from the internet, not even with through HTTPS. I'm not going to check any signature. I'm going to build inside the container, and that's going to be my application. Awesome. Well. Not really, because who's maintaining that? How do you make sure there are no vulnerabilities in that image? Um, so that's why it's a static scan is going to help you. It's going to look at the software versions, the libraries, compare that against a database uh, with vulnerabilities, CVEs or something like that. And actually, the way that containers work, it's very handy for this, because they basically, as you build new containers, you always take like a base, base image. So uh, when you detect a vulnerability on the base image, it propagates across the other containers. So actually, this can be uh, implemented in in a in efficient way. Uh, probably you want to implement this at the security, uh, at, at the registry level. So if you're using Docker Hub or you are using, I don't know, whatever repository you're using, you probably have that there already. There are a bunch of different open source um, for for implementing this, for example, uh, Core SQA. But is that enough to cover all the use cases? Uh, well, we can we say if our images passes, our static is going to need secure? I wouldn't say that so. so because uh, containers, they are basically like black boxes. It's very difficult to look what's happening inside. So we need 
a software, we need a technique to look inside and see how the, those processes inside that containers they are behaving. We can just audit, we can enforce, uh, we can, these are uh, the use cases. There are a few bunch of different tools for, for looking at containers being executed at runtime. SecCom, it's a facility in the kernel. Uh, it works great, but it's very basic, so you can allow or uh, blacklist some system calls. When you put it together with BPF, you can do some additional stuff, but it's still, um, it's kind of like tricky to work on this. C Linux and Aparmor, they work also in containers, but you know them already. Uh, it, they don't integrate with your orchestration tool. Uh, they don't have high level of uh, concepts or rules for creating the policies. You have RDD from um, SE Linux, and we also created Falco. How many people know Falco from here? Raise hands. Uh, just a few, less than six days. Okay, so this is a, I, I hope this is going to be useful. So, first, uh, to understand Falco, uh, I'm going to explain you a little bit about um, how Sysdig, the open source technology, works. And we'll move into Falco. So, Sysdig looks at all the system calls being executed in your host. Basically, we hook into the Linux kernel trace points and that way, we can see absolutely everything. There are, there are some uh, functions when you enter into a syscall and when you exit into a syscall that we can hook in there and actually also uh, understand how much time you spend on, on every syscall. Unlike other solutions, like for example, S-Trace that you have to attach into, into an existing uh, or into a new process, uh, Sysdic uh, approach is different. So we just see everything and we will filter out stuff that we are not interested in until we reach the visibility on what we want to say. Um, so this is a simple diagram of the architecture of Sysdic. So we hook at the kernel level, we capture all the system calls and because containers, they are just processes running into a different user space. Uh, we don't really care if it's a native application, Docker container, Rocket, um, all of them, they just work. Um, a little bit also on how the architecture of Cystic works. So we have, at the moment, it's a kernel module because basically all the facilities existing there, they were not enough to reach the visibility we wanted. This might change in the future, but at the moment is as it is, is this is a small kernel module that copies all the system calls into this ring share buffer. And from there we have a set of libraries and user space processes that decode all the system calls from there. We parse events, we actually decode known protocols like HTTP or SQL or Memcache um, using some additional um, scripts uh, that they are called GSLs. And looking at it from from a, a instrumentation or an orchestration perspective, it's going to be like that. So we have the host, we copy the system calls, actually there are events I'll show you in a sec, into the ring buffer. The user uh, processes typically run into a container and that user space process talks to your orchestration tool. This is Mesos, it's going to be the example I'll show you today. And you can correlate those low-level entities that they are system calls with high-level entities that they are resources in your orchestration tool, applications, tasks, all that. So if we look at that uh, sharing buffer, we will see something like this, uh, like an, uh, what we call event stream, where we can see the different system calls and we can do a bunch of different things. We can save them to a disk for uh, later analysis. We will see this, uh, this in a second for doing forensics. Uh, we can analyze uh, in live mode, filter our stuff and understand what the processes are doing. But how we can use system calls to understand what's happening inside the containers? Well, um, if we know how things work behind uh, behind um, the hoods, we we can know that if we find a clone or an XVE system call, it's because a new process has been spammed. So a new process has created inside that container. We can use look at open and close to see if we are opening files or accepting connections on sockets. Sockets and connect accept to, to look at network activity. This is our 
this is the way basically you can understand what's happening inside looking at the system calls. But we will see in a sec that with Cystic Falco you don't need to go that deep because we provide an abstraction on top of all these things. And to be completely fair, all these activities or events as we put in, in that ring buffer, they are not just plain system calls as you would see from S-Trace output. Actually, we put a lot of metadata or contextual information so the libraries on the user space, they can understand, they can reconstruct uh, what's happening. So for example, we can see the process from that a specific system call came, the parent process, the remote IP address, if it's a uh, system calls that they are affecting the socket. So that's what provides all that level of visibility. So now that you have a little bit of understanding of Falco, uh, of Cystic, sorry, let's look at how we can implement a security tool on top of this. So looking at how the system calls are doing, what the processors are doing, we can detect suspicious activity. We will define that in a rule set. Um, that rule set is basically created using the filtering language of Cestic, which is very similar to TCP DAM, that most probably all of you are going to be familiar with. It works very well in containers because this way of looking at the processes at the host level, so even if our user space process is in a container, from there we are going to see what's happening in all the containers that they are, they are being executed in the same hosts. On Falco, you can configure notifications when any of these rules they are triggered, like sending out commands or putting things into a file. And it was, as I was saying at the beginning, um, it is entirely open source. So a few examples, and I'm looking back because my screen here doesn't work very well. So if we want to look at a shell, a bash uh, shell running into, into a container, we can write a rule like that. So container ID is not the host, so it's not. It's a process that it's running in a different URL space, and the process name is that. We can actually create those arrays and do matches against those. So if a file directory is in this list, tell me about it, and we do a write system call. If we change uh, the the name space of a specific process, and it's not Docker or Cystic, which are the only privileged guys in my host, there's probably something uh, wrong happening. So these are just a few examples of different things. Um, once these rules trigger, you can send uh, notifications to syslog, file, standard output, or even to any command. So you can send an email notification or a webhook, a post notification, whatever it is. So with this, I finish the boring slides and I'm going to jump into the dangerous territories of demos. First, I'm going to demo um, in detail a uh, Cystic Falco. Uh, the open source solution, and then we'll look at some of the cool magic of Cystic Secure. All right, so um, I have here um, some configuration files. Falco.jaml is my main configuration file for Falco. Uh, just a bunch of different things like which are, where are my um, configuration files, where I'm sending the notification. So this is like pretty much standard out of the box. Falco rules contains the default rule set. I'll show you later how this is shared. All the same uh, syntax for this language is the same in Falco and in Cystic Secure. Here, this is a super long file uh, where you can define uh, all these rule sets. And we can uh, basically define macros or aliases to simplify things. So if we, if we look at the lo lowest level Cystic filtering language, a write needs to be either opening or the system called open at, and we need to do uh, uh, the open with the write flag on, and it needs to be a file. So instead of having to write that all the time, we can define it on a macro so we can work at, the, at a higher level. So this is full of 
helpers, macros, and definitions. So that's fine. You are going to work into a different file that looks like this. And here, uh, um, I have defined a uh, um, standard, uh, a rule that uh, I use a lot of times. So, all right, I got this container, and I know the processes that need to run in that container. If something else that is not that process runs for any reason, send a notification. All right. In this case, I'm looking. Look, at, let's look at the well. Role is just the name of the role description. But what it's really interesting here is this this condition. So basically, I'm looking for a new process that has been created. All right, which is this first macro. The second, I want this to be running inside a container. I don't want to look at the processes natively on the host. I'm um, pulling, in this case, already some container metadata, in this case, the counter image. And I'm looking that it's called Nginx. All right. And finally, if all the processes, or if there is any process that it's not called Nginx in that container, I'll trigger a notification. Some of you probably are going to say, oh, you could, you can rename the, pro the name of a process. Yes, we have a role to detect process renaming themselves, okay? Um, I'm going to try to keep this simple. I'll send uh, an alert message like this and some priority. So to, I'm, the, I'm running this at the moment in my, in my laptop to keep things simple. And how you run Falco is basically like this. It runs as a container where you run the Falco container privilege mode because it needs to load that kernel module. Uh, I mount a bunch of different volumes to, to get information about the hosts and I mount my configuration files. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to do run that container. And then here in this side, I'm going to run an Nginx container. Okay, I'm going to call it Nginx. So we need to look at the output here. So now I'm going to do going to run I was in my history. All right, I'm going to run a shell in that container. So I'm here inside my Nginx container, and I can see how there was already a notification, which is part of the default rule set that's saying, hey, a new shell has been created in this container, and so it actually has been attached. And this is the, the user who executed it. And this is the container ID, the process. It was a new process. And this is basically what's been executed. All right. Um, but now, since I have created that rule that says if any other process running in here uh, exists and it is not called Nginx, trigger a rule. So anything I execute, like ls or cad, Resolve. If we look back at the output, we can see how we are getting those messages in there. Okay, so this is the use case of Falco, gaining visibility inside the containers, creating a rule set or a policy of things that we want to look for, and trigger alerts on those. So. As I was saying at the beginning, uh, this is pretty unique. Uh, there are big names, uh, big companies already using this. But at the end of the day, it's like kind of like a do-it-yourself thing. So some some people you work with, they, they were asking for something easier to build. And this is where we came up with Cestic Secure. I'm going to do a very quick demo on something similar. So what we can see here is a different clus a cluster with a few containers running inside. It's not doesn't really matter. Actually, I want to show you, so you believe me, this is my interface. So with uh, DCOS Mesos, um, and I have here a WordPress 
um, application with a client that's making fake requests, my application, and then the database. And also I have deployed Sysdick in all my nodes using Marathon. So when I'm looking at this from an application perspective, uh, see all the containers, but I'm interested in looking at this one. Okay, so here I can see how there is this client talking to WordPress that at the same time talks to MySQL. So um, I decided to create a rule to look for a specific anomalous activity. So one of them we are going to see executed, it's going to be this one. So the name is new shell, we're in a container, a description I got here, some severity, where I am applying this, I can I can leverage any marathon metadata, message metadata for this. Uh, the rules, if we look at the rules editor, you see it's exactly the same language we could see with Falco, so you can actually reuse all your Falco config. And which is very interesting is what actions, because with Falco you, ca you can just take a uh, send out a notification, that's it. Obviously you can put that into an orchestration tool and then take actions, modify what are doing your containers. But here we, can, we have already made it available for you. So we can do two th three things. So we can stop or kill the container to prevent the attacker from breaking in. Actually, uh, when thinking on containers, uh, uptime, it's not something we should be proud of. The less uptime that your containers have, the less likely is that they are being hacked. So we need to change it uh, into a different uh, paradigm. We can also pause a container if it's a database or something else that mm, has been a legacy application, who knows, something that cannot be killed immediately. And finally, we can create a SSD capture. So if you remember at the beginning when I was showing you the architecture of Falco, we could get that event stream, all those system calls, plus metadata information, analyze it or dump it into a file. So this is something we can do. And actually a very cool feature of secure is that we can include a number of seconds before that alert, that notification was fired. So that's going to help us to understand in, in the context of security, for example, how the attacker hacked into my container. So in, in the system called file, I'm going to have hopefully that information, okay? Well, it looks like a very a small time, five seconds. We need to understand that when attackers, they are hacking into containers because they, as they know, they are highly volatile. All those uh, attacks attempts, they are most probably automated. So it shouldn't be that bad. In any way, that's a compromise you're going to have between memory assigned into the agent versus uh, time that you want to have there. And obviously, after the notification, you can include as many seconds as, as you want. We also can send you notifications anywhere, really. Um, so what I'm going to do now is also show you a rule I created this morning, which is actually going to do stuff. So it's a similar thing. When here, I'm looking at someone writing in a binary there, okay? So who should modify a binary there if the container has been built at, Docker, uh, at build time? And what I'm going to do is to kill the container and take a capture file. So now I'm going to minimize all this and hopefully SSH into the right node. So when looking, if we look at this with perspective, I talk about uh, static scanning at the beginning, and then this runtime or dynamic scanning. So it's safe to assume that all these Im images that I'm running in production in my cluster, they are uh, safe. They don't have any well-known vulnerabilities, but still, there are two use cases, for example, uh, detecting a shell running a container. Number one, 
someone using a fair day vulnerability and doing a common injection injection sorry the other one it's someone like me who has decided to ssh into a production server and now do docker exec in that specific container sorry that's not the right idea and start hot fixing the stuff because i can do it why why shouldn't we doing it well you shouldn't you shouldn't be doing this but you can do it so i got the I executed the shell inside the container. I'm looking at the files. But now, if I go back to Falco, and I filter in here, you see this box? It's yellow now. There is one. That basically means, if we switch into this view, is that someone run, executed the shell in the container. And we could automatically detect it and give you some information like when this happened, so just a few seconds ago, uh, the severity, the policy that was triggered, the container image and the container name, the host, where was this executed, the container details and the alerts details. Actually, if I go here, uh, fully, you see, you can see the ls command that I executed. So this is really, really cool to understand what are the attackers or anyone really, even someone from your team who decided to exec into a container or do anything really, or connect to a remote server, they start meaning bytecoins, whatever the hell they are doing inside your container. But we can do more. If you remember that policy I created here, uh, I said, okay, if I write below any binary directory, I want to kill the, uh, I want to stop, kill the container. So, all right, let's do that. So I'm going to do this because I'm going to do echo full bar being hacked. And execute that and you see that it didn't do anything else, right? Just uh, straight away, the container has been killed and actually, Let's look at this ID and let's look at hopefully it has been a schedule in the same node. Yes, so if you see, this is the previous container which was exited, it was killed, and uh, Mesos started a new one automatically. It's orchestrated, it's safe, it's in principle the best way to stop an attack in a containerized application is just to kill it because uh, the orchestration tool will create a new container with a clean image. All right. So now, if I go here, three minutes ago, all right. So we can see that in addition to running a shell, I got this other alert trigger. Someone modified a WordPress container. So we can see the commands, hopefully, which is the same thing because I didn't run any other stuff. If I go back, there is a very, very neat feature. So we have seen how with this, so far, we can stop the attacks, killing the containers, basically. We can also see what it was executed in the case of running a shell. If it's a process doing an unexpected outgoing connection, it doesn't make sense to look at the commands. But still, we can do the following. All these system calls that they can be dumped into a file, if we configure that in our policy, it's going to be available here in view captures. And we can open them with a new UI, a new Sysdic UI that it's called Sysdic Inspect. In this case, Sysdic Inspect, it's available in here. But this is entirely open source as well. So you can actually install it in your Linux host or in your Mac laptops as well. And use it for troubleshooting as you are long used to. But now use it for post-mortem analysis and forensics of your container interactions. For the ones who knew Sysdic before, 
if you remember, we have two options, like the command line tool that is required to use all those hackish uh, filters in a TCP dump style, or we could use CCSD, which was a and courses UI similar to HSOP. Still, it was kind of like funky to use because you had to understand all those low level concepts of file descriptors, system calls, system call errors, all that. With Cystic Inspect, we have taken a slightly different approach where basically the idea is that we are going to help you to correlate high-level concepts like alerts coming from Cystic Secure, processes running, containers, or any like file activity in the file system, network activity as you can see here, network applications, security commands, even performance and logs, all things that anyone with basic DevOps or Linux concepts can understand down to all the system calls and if you have a look at here in this file we have 5.5 thousand system calls so the, it's a lot of them the idea now is that you can click on any of these boxes and correlate all that information and we can see the see it down here in this in this a specific capture file. There, there are a couple of things I want to show you here. We can see how there are some patterns of file activity in here. This is, and we have the alert here. This is a clear example of my capture, including a number of seconds before the actual alert was triggered. So it works. Everything has been live. The other thing we have on top is the system file that it was modified. So using this uh, timeline, it's going to be easy for, from a, a human uh, side point of view to correlate activity, looking at these graphs. And actually, I can, whoops, I can use these sliders to focus my approach around the specific time frame I'm interested at looking. And with all these boxes I have here in the top, I can actually isolate them and look at, for example, all the activity. So in this case, when my alert was triggered, two files, they were modified. Number one, the file, the binary file I, I put on slash bin slash hack. The other one, Bash, automatically wrote the Bash history file. But I can do even more. So I can go into this specific file and decode the system calls that I wrote that file and see the actual contents of the file. All right. This is very, very powerful. This is the first tool that's going to give you all the information you need to do that post-mortem analysis to understand how they hack into your container, what they did, what kind of information they could access, credentials, certificates, database, and see if they actually send that information somewhere else so you have a data leak. All that, even if your container doesn't exist anymore, because as you see, as you saw, we killed that container. It doesn't exist anymore, but we could do all this troubleshooting with Cisic Inspect. Um, another cool example, uh, actually it's part of our demo, but since I have some time I wanted to show you, is this, hopefully is this one that we got here. Yes, no, it's not in here. Capture files, events, uh, another one hour. Sorry, this should be one day. Let me see, where do we have that container? Let me see if it's going to be in here. Yes, hopefully it is. Not last hour one day yeah so in this case it was kind of like a more complex attack so we saw how someone could uh 
do a, a, a shell injection or execute a shell, download a rootkit, and that person uncompressed the rootkit. He couldn't proceed any farther because we killed the container, but going back into my capture file, I can do again this post-mortem analysis, bringing in my notification, my file activity, my network activity, and for example, commands. So in this case, I can see how the commands, they were executed basically at the same time that my alert did fire, and there was like a spike of download traffic. So in this case, instead of filtering for file activity, I'm going to filter the commands. And I can see all those commands again, the shell, the download, the uncompress. But now I can filter on this specific command or process. And here on the left side, we have different views, like connections, it was a tar, it didn't have any connection, directories, file errors, system calls. I can look at the system calls, but unless you know how things work, this is not very meaningful, but looking at the files, everyone is going to understand and see how the file that was uncompressed. And I can go to any of these files, decode it, actually put it in a beautiful way with assay, and re being able to rebuild, reconstruct all the components of that specific rootkit that my attacker executed. So this is everything I wanted to show you in this presentation. Uh, do I have a thank you slide, something like that? Probably I should. Yeah, there we go. So um, this is everything I have for today. Uh, Falco, it's, it's uh, as I said, this open source community-based project. Uh, we have contributions for many people. If you feel, if you you are not into writing code, but just contributing new rules for any of the applications you work, we will be very very happy to accept your pull requests. Uh, you can also join our Slack community and discuss. Um, there is a mailing list, but you know these days these things are kind of like low volume. And if you like Cystic Secure also. Uh, uh, can go to the booth and talk to us about it. And now I think we have a few minutes for questions. So anyone? Hello? Yes. yes. It <laughs> is. Um, um, don't take this the wrong way, and uh, but I'm going to play the devil's advocate a bit. Um, it seems we can't, like, have another week uh, and something gets hacked. Um, I don't know. The last couple of weeks was kind of crazy. Everything gets hacked. How do how do you guys assure that SysDig is not itself hacked. leaky? Because if I s understand correctly, basically anything I have in my applications will go through it, unfiltered, uh, credit card numbers, data, you name it. It's going to be uh, sucked up by SysDig? Yeah. Okay, that's a good question. Um, so basically, uh, all the analysis, it happens at broad time, so it's not leaving both with the open source product and with the commercial product. The analysis, it's happening in that specific container. Okay, It's not that we are going to send the data somewhere else. Uh, so that constrains like a little bit where the data leaves. It's, it's uh, always in the same house. There is no uh, leaking unless you take a the capture. In that case, it's sent somewhere else. Or the commands history. Yes, that goes to your backend. Um, the other thing is says the, the container itself is not exposing any external service. You can also you could also write Cystic secure rules to monitor Cystic itself. But at the end of the day, you need to define a boundary on what you are going to trust and wha what you are not going to trust. It's the same thing when writing a 
credentials vault. When you write all your, you store all your authentication, password, certificates into a service and that it's in charge to distribute it across all your infrastructure. What happens if your ball gets hacked? Well, you have access to everything. So it's like a little bit of a compromise. Yes, you have deep vis visibility. Uh, you can see everything for the good and for the bad. So it, this is a decision you need to make. Makes sense, if it makes sense. Can I ask one follow-up question? Yes. How do you guys do this with your hosted solution um, with regard to basic things like, I don't know, like entry security or? So, yeah. So all that uh, with, the, with the hosted solution, uh, all communication gets encrypted end-to-end, uh, -end basically. Uh, if you are really concerned and you don't want to share any database with any other customer because you have super private data, you can install on-prem and it's going to be your responsibility making sure everything runs smoothly and you can implement your own uh, security policies. Thanks. More questions? Feedback? Regarding fa Falco rules, uh, is there a way to create at least a base sample uh, template based on uh, existing activity? So at the moment it's not possible. Uh, it's one feature which is in the roadmap of the commercial product. Probably some pieces maybe end up appearing in the, in the open source tool. I don't have either the authority or the information to talk about that. So I don't know. I know it's part of the, of the, of the commercial product. Um, you can also implement it in your own way. You can get Falco, and actually someone already wrote about this on the internet, uh, sending all the events all uh, different events into a login system like a LA key and then do machine learning there based on that. So there are multiple and different approaches. At the moment it doesn't exist in either of both solutions, but it's going to be something available very soon. More questions? All right, well, thanks very much for listening. I hope you like it. And if you have any other questions, just come around. <laughs>